And emotional discomfort? Emotional discomfort is a different thing because emotional discomfort always revolves around a separate self. Pain in your neck doesn't necessarily revolve around a separate self. Now, emotional discomfort, suffering, revolves around a separate self. So in that case, rather than doing what the discomfort is asking you to do, which is to relieve it or avoid it, it would be better to explore the separate self around whom it revolves. Because if you... Say more about that. Okay, but let me just say this first. If you relieve the discomfort of the separate, uh, 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 the emotional discomfort, let, let me give you, try to give you an example. Let's, let's say you're, you're just, you're, you're sitting, the, there are no demands on your attention. And because there's nothing for you to engage with, a, a feeling of, let's say, a feeling of loneliness, like a, a kind of an atmosphere of loneliness begins to settle on you, or, or, or sorrow. Now, that's uncomfortable. Now, thought will provide all sorts of ways of avoiding the discomfort of that feeling. For instance, um, I go to the fridge, get something to eat, check my emails, um, <coughs> have a drink, d do something. In other words, we don't realize it, but many of our activities are initiated solely for the purpose of avoiding this dis-ease, this pervasive feeling that something is missing or something is lacking. Even, of, of course, the, the, the really, the kind of, the, the, there are a series of, kind of gross objects that, that are the common objects, substances, food, etc. But there are very, there are much subtler ways in which we avoid the discomfort of these feelings and, and thinking. Repetitive thinking is one of them. It's, it's not illegal, it's not bad for our health. So we just find ourselves dreaming, day, daydreaming. Off we go into the future. The sole purpose of that daydreaming thought is to deflect attention away from the discomfort of this sorrow which is, seems to be at the center of ourselves. So become very, first, the first thing to do is to become very sensitive to the impulse to avoid the, the uncomfortable feelings, either through the, the gross ways or probably these more subtle ways. Even sometimes reading an Advaita book or watching the next YouTube clip on non-duality can be just a, a way of giving your attention to an object so that we don't have to fully feel this dis-ease. So that's what I mean by don't do what the feeling is asking you to do. What the feeling is asking you to do is avoid it or suppress it. So don't do either. Do the opposite. Turn around and face it. Let the feeling come totally to you. And face it so fully that you can keep facing it, keep living with the feeling opening yourself to the feeling until you can truly say that there is not the slightest resistance to it. And you have to be very careful because, of course, the separate self will turn even this into a technique for getting rid of the feeling. In other words, I'm, I'm allowing the feeling so that I can get rid of it. That's not allowing the feeling. So you have to really, really ch take time and check with yourself that the feeling is, is being allowed without the slightest resistance to it. And the test of that is you say to yourself, can I live with this feeling forever? You have to be able to answer yes to that question. When you can answer yes, honestly, to that question, you know that there's no resistance to it then 
turn around and look at the feeling again and see what remains of it. So that, that's one approach. That's approach that goes directly to the feeling. A, another approach would be to explore the separate self around whom the feeling re revolves. Because this, the feeling is always a sensation in the body plus a line of thinking. And that line of thinking always has the separate self as the main character. So let's say there's a, there's a feeling of sorrow. The feeling of sorrow will be felt here or here. It will have a, a bodily component to it. But there will also be an, accompany, an accompanying um, commentary that revolves around a, a separate me character. So the first thing to do in this case is to explore that separate eye. Go, go towards yourself. See if Take yourself through the inquiry again. Discover if if that separate self is really present. Is it really what you are? If you go to the feeling of I am, do you really feel a separate, limited, located awareness? Or do you find ever-present, unlimited being? So in, the, in this way, you're exploring the, the thought aspect of the feeling. The feeling is a has a bodily aspect and a thought aspect. You're exploring the thought aspect that revolves around the separate eye. Now, having discovered that the separate eye is non-existent, the whole story that was revolving around it, it can no longer stand. Then you're just left with the sensation in the body, this, this wave of sensation that was part of the sad feeling. And then you explore the sensation in a similar way that we did this morning. You just go to the raw sensation and, and you explore it. And that exploration, the kind of exploration we did, it is a way of, although we don't realize it when we're doing it, we are actually flushing out the me feeling from the body, seeing that the body is just transparent vibration permeated with empty knowing. So the what is it made of seems to me to apply to both the inquiry in the body or of the thought. Are you referring to your experience in general? What is your experience in general? Or are you talking, do you mean what is this uncomfortable feeling made as, of? As, as you were talking and I was following you, um, it, it felt like both, both lines are um, covered by the question what is it made of? And so it's feeling at this moment as if the question is coming spontaneously and maybe my separate self is on a hunt for itself and suspicious of its motives, which is a good game. Um, but yes, that question seems to cover a lot. What is it made of? And it's always what, what is the uncomfortable of, feeling made of? Yes. yes. And, and also now when you were talking about exploring the separate self through, yes. it, does it exist? Um, yes, yes. You, that's it. Yeah. You, you, if you have a, that's it. You, you, you have a, an uncomfortable feeling. What is its nature? You can either go the first way, which is just, just to allow the feeling so completely that there is no resistance to it. And then you turn around and look at the feeling again and see what remains of its discomfort when there is no resistance to it. Or go use this other, go this other route, which is to, it's a little more analytical in some ways. You, you explore the thought component and see that the main character on whom the feeling depends, the separate me, is simply not there. And then all that remains is, is a neutral sensation in the body. So that those are the, yes, but both those, the exploration of the thought and of the subsequent exploration of the sensation is part of the, what does it, what is it made of inquiry, yes. And you should feel free to, to just use any of these tools that 
feel appropriate. Sometimes you may feel like this very razor sharp analytical approach, which slices experience up looking for the separate self. Other times you, you may feel that's too, you don't feel like that. You just want to sit with the feeling and totally welcome it, become aware of your resistance to it. Just go on opening yourself more and more to the feeling until there is not the slightest resistance to it. So use use all these these tools, but always we should be guided by what what we love to do, what we're interested in doing. Ne never make it a a technique that you imp or a practice that you impose on yourself out of discipline, duty. I think I should. This is good for me. All that just strengthens the separate self. 